also just arrived at Walsall for the quarter-final match between Belgium and Spain. Um, apparently it's going to be a really good game. This is my first game for the tournament since being back from America. Belgium are looking really strong, really good. Um, so is Spain, so hopefully this will be an interesting game. I'm going to, based off no knowledge of any team, I'm going to guess a 2-1 win to Belgium. Um, it should be exciting. The weather's really nice. The stadium's looking good. Looks like there's a fair few number of fans. So let's hope for a decent game. Hello, my name is Victor Sapirens. I'm the UEFA Vino Mini Media Operations Manager here in Under-17 Finals in England. Nice so you to have, see you. Nice to meet you too. So you have a very big role in this tournament, making sure that everyone can see the players, see them on TV, and you can make sure that all the media get access to the players. What's that been like so far at this tournament? Well, thank you for these kind words. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, Indeed, uh, under-17 final tournament with the 16 teams, the best of the best of, of European youth football has uh, arrived to the land of the football. So, which means that uh, we are watching the best players in this age group and uh, my role is to make sure that all the media, all the photographers, all the TV companies working here have their best service possible in, in, in England. Uh, of course, uh, it wouldn't be possible on my own we have a teamwork here together with the football association together with the stadiums together with all the people who are working in the clubs who are operating in the stadiums because we are coming here with our knowledge with our expertise but at the same time we do respect the traditions of the english football and traditions of the english uh, media working here and in creating this synergy is a key to success for us and so far we hope we hope it's gonna be it, it, it was a good uh, experience for everybody and we hope that uh, even until the final when we will reach the climax of the of the competition side here we will have also uh, the best best possible media service provided here and like you just said you're hoping to have the best media service possible do you think that that's that you're on your way to achieving that ready ahead of the final well of course i think the same like for the players you know every match is a new experience for you you come to a different venues you meet the different people and uh, the most important is to have uh, this uh, momentum going further you know every game you take the best out of it if you have some issues, we always try to discuss about them uh, in a debrief session po post-match to make sure that the next time we don't face the same problems, we don't face the same issues in the stadiums. And so far, I should say that moving to the knockout stage, uh, I should knock three times on the wooden <laughs> chair here, uh, we, we have uh, created a, quite a good system over here. As I said, this is a teamwork together with the football association people, you know, together with the club uh, press officers, uh, you know, combining our brains together, combining our experience together, you know, I see that the media are coming to also non-England matches, which is a good sign as well, because you can see also good football, at, and, uh, and of course, you know, to meet the players in this uh, age, future stars of European football, this is something which attracts the uh, media from uh, different countries and uh, as well as you, as we see we have uh, students from Derby University yeah. we are very pleased pleasant to see you all here and we hope that this experience which you will get here will help you out in the future careers a final question do you think that the spectators and the, and the players themselves have been enjoying and learning a lot from this experience that you're giving them definitely definitely of course you know one of the main tasks of this tournament is to create a good uh, good uh, experience for the fans you know they are coming here with the families uh, dads moms are coming here uh, brothers sisters you know uh, of course England is a, is a country with, with a strong traditions in football but here you support the local clubs you know when it goes to the international level especially when the 
players from other countries are coming, you know, you, you, you need to find your team here as well. You need to find already, investigate who are the top players in this level and, and, and which are your favorite players. So stadiums have been so far very hospital. Uh, I know that the Football Association has created a lot of events uh, before the tournament, you know, just to promoting this uh, under-17 brand uh, here yeah. in England and uh, together with the Football Association uh, we, we are trying to do our best here in the matches. Uh, I'm speaking not only about the hospitality in the stadium but also some fun activities in the half times, pre-match, post-match. We have these three lions, maskers walking around, just engaging with the fans. So I think so far it has been very great. And the most important thing that the fans from around the Europe can meet uh, together and be friends, you know, around the matches and uh, create new contacts. Uh, because Under-17 is, uh, is a great platform for building the relationships toward the future success. That's great, thank you for talking to me. Thank you very much, it was a pleasure and good luck for you thank in the you. next matches. And keep the football in your heart. <laughs> So we have another very special guest on the vlog, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Uh, Andy Carter from the Football Association, so I've been tournament director for the under 17 years. So what, just explain to the people who are watching, what's been your role essentially, what have you had to do for this tournament? Uh, so I, I actually prepared to bid for this tournament three, four years ago, so uh, it's been it's been that length of time in the making, so contracting the stadiums, arranging uh, commercial partners, uh, right the way across to accommodation and then recruiting a team to, to basically manage all of that on the ground. Really. I can imagine that's probably a very stressful job, having to deal with the whole tournament. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so to start with I was he heavily involved, fortunately the team have taken over a lot of that now, so they've had a lot more of a stress just recently, but um, I think it's always stressful when you see something you've been working on for quite a long time come uh, come to life really, so yeah, it's been busy. And is it a relief now to see it running so smoothly, or has there been a couple of issues along the way? In tournaments like this there's always a few issues, but I think on the whole all the teams are uh, having a good experience, uh, we've got uh, good good crowds coming to the game, so yeah, I think it's been a, it's been a big success from our side really. And what's it, do you, and do you know much of the difference between covering a young age tournament to a senior age tournament? Is there a big difference? Uh. I just think the scale, I think the way that UEFA run these events is very similar, so the, the, the way uh, and the methodologies they've got are put in place, uh, structures and security and medical and all of those sorts of provisions are very similar. I think it's just the scale and the amount of people involved and the, and the level of detail that when, when you move into the senior level it just goes higher and higher and obviously the number of journalists increase, the number of demands increase, the number of broadcasts increase, so yeah, it's a, it's a really good grounding for our staff and for our volunteers to get involved in a, in a tournament like this. This level. And how's the tournament done? Has it gone as well as you expected, or has it gone above and beyond the expectations? Yeah, I think I think it's going as we as we hoped for so far. So we've done over 41,000 people at the game so far, uh, with a target of 50,000 people to come through the doors, and we've seen we've seen good crowds at all of our games. So a lot of a lot of young kids and a lot of um, new audiences are coming into football stadiums and seeing some really good football. So yeah, it's gone well. And what would you say to people wanting to try and come and get involved in both the spectator side or the volunteer side or the journalism side of football? What would you say to the younger audiences? Spectator wise, look, I mean the tickets for this are really affordable, so for the semi-finals we've just priced them at a pound a ticket, so we can't make them a lot more affordable yeah. than that. Um, and for people that want to work in, the, in it, I think the best way to do that is to get volunteering and get involved and, and put yourselves out there. So we've had around 70 different volunteers for this tournament, mm -hmm. um, doing a vast array of roles from team liaison officers to uh, running our VIP areas and bits and pieces. So, my, my personal advice would be get yourself out there, get involved, get a flavour for it and, and work out which area you want to work in. So just got back to the house after a really good day at the match. Forgot to kind of film some stuff at the end where we were kind of filing and sorting through the photos that we'd taken. It's been a while since I've vlogged so kind of just focused on doing photography because that was my first time doing photography at a match and then just kind of went from there really. We got some good interviews as you've just kind of seen. I predicted 2-1 which was a surprising end to the game. Spain went 1-0 up with a really nice goal. They looked really strong. Belgium at the start of the second, literally at the start of the second half pretty much from kickoff, equalised with a really good goal as well. And then um, unfortunately for Spain their keeper kicked the ball out and it rebounded off one of the Belgian players backs and went in and gave Belgium the win and put them through to the semi-finals. The next game that we're going to be at is the England semi-final against Holland, which will be interesting because Holland are the favourites to win. They look really strong apparently from what um, the other teammates, what the other 
journalists have seen. So I'm really looking forward to being at that game. I'll we'll try and do some more vlogging of behind the scenes for you guys to see and hopefully maybe try and get some more interesting interviews that were also in this vlog today. Um, check in with you guys at the next game.